<laughs> All right, you folks in Texas? Yeah, this, <laughs> they got shoulders on them too. See? Oh, and he just got and away. And then trout. Here, let me get this guy. Go ahead. <laughs> easy. Easy. Easy, dude, easy, 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 easy. You be easy. I think you got me by about a pound. That's a heavy fish right there. What a gorgeous trout. Got him. All right. He's a done fish. <laughs> I said he's a done fish. Yes, sir. That's the Mogan we're yeah, looking for. That's the Mogan right trout there. right there, Mr. We Mogan. had a double on that fish Ooh, right there. We had a double trout that size right there. Wow. That could be that's what you back. come to Stewart, Florida for that's, right there. That was beautiful fish. That's the way that's supposed to happen. Beautiful. For all y'all folks out there that are as freaky as I am about a big giant gator trout like this. Fish hey, on. That looks like a big one. We're looking at that one there. Oh, hey. What's up guys? How you doing? Captain Blair Wiggins here with Captain that. Mark Nichols. The big camera up there. Oh, that camera up there. Oh, that thing. Oh, and right. welcome to Facebook hey, Live. Camera. And this, uh, Facebook this Live. is going to be a fun one, I'll guarantee that. Okay. We're going to be talking about DOA lures and a lot of the clips y'all have seen in the past few years coming up. And uh, y'all can ask Mr. Nichols here any question that you want to. Any question. It's Facebook, remember? Yeah, and <laughs> I can make up answers. I'm good. So is it like, you know, normally you go to a break, but we're just still on, huh? Yeah, we're still on, oh, so. I'm, I'm scared, so. Anyway, yeah. if you don't have any questions, I'm going to make up some. Like, hey, Mark, if you were going to go fishing right now and, like, there was a lot of crap on top of the surface of the water and they were eating small stuff, what would you do? And I'd say, oh, thank you for asking. I'd probably <laughs> take something like this right here. Little little 3.5 worm hook. It's short enough where in the back of the bait, it's not too far back where it's still going to allow the bait to rotate. Anytime you got a situation like this, this is where the primary, the primary part of the weight in that bait is right through here and also through the body. So this is going to tend to swim and pivot real well. And of course, it's going to be weedless if there was a lot of loose floating stuff. I would go ahead and skin hook it like that. But normal day to day, I'm not going to skin hook it unless I have to. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Okay. Definitely agree with that. And I can add a little bit more to that, too. Uh, if you guys tie in your terminal knot on that, I always tie a loop knot, especially when using a small bait like this. Well, not especially. I always use a loop knot. Uh, I guess the only time I don't use it is when I'm using live bait for grouper or something like that where you snell the hook. But uh, anytime I'm using artificial, you want that loop on there. And a perfect, uh, perfect knot is that. Merle Chandler canoe man knot we've been using for the so past stupid simple 30 years now and uh, uh, yeah just tag a good in, knot tag in points rare where it doesn't grab stuff yeah. yeah dumb simple knot works real good and you scroll down on is that video on your site here yeah somewhere okay. look for the there. canoe man knot and uh, yeah it's very simple I've talked to about a gazillion people and I haven't had anybody Let me tell see me no. now when Mark says he's skinning the bait basically what he's doing is if you see how that hook is exposed right there, if you're going through the, there we go, if you're going through the water and you're seeing that hook exposed, if there's any eel grass or any cucumber grass floating, it's going to get caught on that, that uh, the barb of the hook. So when you skin it, what you do is you pull the bait forward just a little and you put the skin of that bait just like that. So what that does is covers up the point of the hook so it doesn't snag any of that grass. And when a fish comes up and bites it, let's see, turn it that way, it'll pull that down and then you set the hook and it goes right in. But uh, that is the way you skin a bait right there. You know, what's, you know, to a lot of saltwater fishermen, you know, they look at some of this stuff and they go, oh, I hadn't seen that before. Of course, a lot of young people went on YouTube and they saw it a long time ago or whatever, but... Uh, as far as uh, old farts go, you know, some of this stuff has been used in freshwater for years and years and years. That yeah, always cracked and me up when people said, freshwater bait, it's a freshwater bait. Well, why can't you use it in saltwater? Yeah, just because so, it says freshwater on it. Well, because you know, I tell people, the fish know, you know, if they're fresh or salt. All right, we got some comments up. Let's see. Vero Beach. Hi, from Vero Beach. Great lures from Okeechobee. Thanks, Somebody Franco. Asked about a frog. Yeah. Well... 
Keep asking. <laughs> I've got a. Actually, I'm working on a uh, a crawfish right now. Actually, you and, could uh, you could take the PT and cut one of the. Sh- I already have. I, I've seen some of your creations. Oh yeah. There. Oh yeah. I, I Definitely like off using the wall. Our little curl tail deal. Like if I if I li- take that and just get a lighter and put one of those on either side, it's got a whole lot of wiggle with very little movement, and uh, dumb stupid stuff. But I. Sometimes, I mean, I literally have called this Mr. Potato Head. You know, you've got a basic bait, say it's rigged like this. I've got people that put tails on them with different, you know, like a, a little screw lock with the hook on it where there's a clip of tail that'll follow behind it. Then, of course, you're given, you know, suddenly a silhouette of something that's eight inches long or whatever instead of three and a half. But you also want it to be able to flip out of the way quick because that fish has got to suck the whole thing in. So it's a, you know it's a trade off, but you can definitely give an illusion of being a much larger bait. I just saw one of the questions come up. It says, "How do we? Uh, how do you work a DOA swimming mullet?" And I didn't see what it, whether it said uh, you know the shallow runner or the deep runner on there. It, it went well, off. Well, the swimming mullet's just swimming mullet. It's leadhead. This dude right here, that's swimming mullet. This is more of a cast crank bait. I don't do anything heavily scientific with it. So let's put our head out there. Yeah. Okay, make it that way. Okay. I've always told I'm learning it, this stuff. Here we go. I've always yeah, told yeah. It, everywhere I've ever threw a swimming mullet at a fish, no matter where it's been, I've caught it. Whether it be yellowfin tuna, blackfin tuna, uh, sailfish, we've caught on it. Cobia, Co- everything. Obviously, tarpon, tarpon, tarpon snook. And snook. Yeah, and it's so user friendly. It is a cast and crank bait. You don't need to do anything fancy. You almost don't want to do anything fancy. The only time I find the exception over and over again is just say if we're dredging the bottom for snook during the day around a bridge where they're going to be hugging the bottom. Then we don't mind tapping the bottom and thumping and kicking up a little bit of bottom. But the rest of the time for our tarpon and stuff, they're an up looking fish. We'd like to be able to have it drifting right above their eyeballs there. And I go battle of the bridges where you just sit there and hold that bait and wait for them to eat. Oh yeah. Little simple stuff. That was what terrorized. Yeah, trying you know, but this is essentially a big terrorize. That's so all Greg it Rogers is. on there. What's up, Greg? Greg Rogers on there? Yeah. There's that bait buster. Oh, the bait buster. Hey, y'all want to see a big snook mark caught or that I caught? Which one are you going to play? Uh, we can show one here, the one mark caught. Uh, it's not on the bait buster. Let's see. Let's go on your VO here. Here you yeah, go. You go caught the oh, bait. there it is. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a rather fat looking fish right there. That one there. If you if yeah. you watch the whole look show on there. They look skinny. That's pretty good. <laughs> that, was a, that was a big fish. That would be a real big that's fish. A real big fish. Oh, that's, that's the one with Greg. Yeah. yeah that's on a bait big buster. Big old slob. Same yeah. neighborhood, Ten Cent Bridge. Yeah, actually, if you guys want to go check that show out, um, awesome. I, I I can't I can talk while I'm fighting a fish, but I can't watch while I'm, while I'm fighting it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk and watch while I'm fighting it. But uh, say if, that five times fast. Yeah, maybe. really. If y'all if y'all see that show, I was actually doing a demo of how we were working the bait right when I hooked that fish up, and uh, man, mm-hmm. I remember that one like it was yesterday. Full grown fish right there. We when we measured it, we put it up on the skeeter, and it went from the S to all the way to the gas cap, and uh, that was forty eight and a half inches. That's a big old fish. Yep. That same uh, captain right there, Greg Snyder, was helping uh, Ed Zayak this weekend. They had fish on a tournament, and uh, Ed had a twelve year old young man. That's a full grown fish right there. Yes, Andy, that was uh, the birthday snook, but that was my birthday. That well, that was his birthday, but I took his birthday present away from him. That's cool. I had to. All right, All right. we can watch his. I'm a nice guy. That's a real remoter. That's a rather large fish. That's a rather large fish, there, Mark. He's gonna. Right. He immediately says, "Well, it's not as big as mine, I think." But you know, <laughs> I got a dent in that fish's back. Yeah, I remember that fish. It had a uh, looked like a serious crease. Like it looks like it was a mosquito lagoon back about ten uh, years ago. It got run over by somebody. Yeah, maybe. maybe. What's that color, Mark? <laughs> That's the, uh, I can never remember the name of that color. Bayou what Tiger. is that, Bayou Tiger? Bayou Tiger. It is somewhere around here. I thought I grabbed one. Uh, I, probably, I probably ate it. Yep. There it is. There it is. That's like, back. A, that's like a LSU colors. Uh, I guess that's why you call it Bayou really, Tiger. We really think that uh, actually it's uh, kind of a croaker type color on the back because a croaker had that purple hue. 
And uh, that's, you know, that's our excuse for why we're catching so many fish with it anyway. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I like it. Well, I, I, I remember the prototype of that lure. And here's the, here's the story of this one. I was going down to do a Dick's Grand opening down South Florida. Oh, that's right. And uh, <laughs> we, broke. yeah, my truck broke down. We tried to do a pompano. We were, uh, and I had to rent a car, go, make it down to Miami, come all the way back. And uh, the mechanic said, Monday is when your car is going to be done. So I came down Monday morning, and uh, he didn't have the truck done. So what's up, Shane Aguidor? Shane Egdor. God, I can't even talk. Shane Agar, I can say it but not read it. Uh, yes, the Labrador snook. But, um, yeah, we were pompano fishing. We fished probably all until 11 o'clock in the morning, did not catch one pompano, and Mark reaches down in his pocket and pulls this old white looking, where did that buy you tiger? And it had no color to it. It was pearl white and it had pocket lint all over it. I shot, I had shot that fish. That was custom pocket lint. I think that's why that fish ate, because the lint was coming off of it. It was just going down. No, eyeball, no eyeballs. And I think I do have that picture on here. I'll, I'll have to get it. But it didn't have any eyeballs on the, uh, on the thing at all. And I had this swim bait hook I hooked up to it. And about the third cast, dunk. I hooked up and it was about a 31 inch, uh, 31 inch big trout. I knew that fish was there. Go ahead and I, talk. I'm going to find that of, picture. Well, I kind of forced you that way. You know, I kept hurting you that way while we were waiting, trying to get you to go the right direction. Yeah, but, that was a nice fish. Matter of fact, there it is. Now. That is a big fish. But look at this, look at this bait. It had white. <laughs> I'm telling, I think it still had some belly lint What's on it. That? We sell a ton of whites. That's one of our favorite colors, but especially that, when it's in a fish's mouth. Like oh yeah, that. definitely. But that was it. That, that, was, that, cool that, that was the prototype. <clears throat> that was a prototype lure. I but, think uh, they had just done most surgery on my head that day. And when we went back, everybody looked at my head. I had a big swollen spot on top of my head. He said, "Hey, what's that half a golf ball doing on your head?" And I guess uh, they keep telling me at the dermatologist to say, "Don't." Just don't do anything. And I was like, he was trying to I grow a second head. It's <laughs> yeah, nasty. It was rude. All right, let's see. This, uh, so now that the mullet run is on full swing down here, guys are using lures or live mullet right now? Okay, if you're asking me that question, you can imagine what the answer is going to be. Come on, I make fishing lures for a living. Uh, but uh, I did fish Saturday. The, the mullet were getting eaten alive. Uh, there were a ton of mullet. I was fishing uh between stewart and fort pierce and they were getting crushed there were some giant jacks but there were also we hooked a tarp and there was well over 100 in there too uh same bio tiger color and uh we also i threw the top water got crushed got broke off by some big jacks we caught uh ed's guy throwing a deadly combo in those baits got a 28 inch trout uh, so diversity of fish that are in those things are awesome a simple way to do it is that big loud cork with something under it uh, don't matter and if you can get it when those jacks are eating all of those other lazy predators are in there eating the late eating the things that those jacks are blowing up on well what I always tell True people story. what I always tell people about fishing the mullet run out there anybody during the mullet run anybody can catch fish on live bait I mean it's the easiest thing to do I know that's the object of the gam I always say that but it's so much more fun and so much more gratification when you can take a piece of plastic and make it look enough like a real bait out there to get a fish to eat it. I mean, it's, there's no other feeling out there like it when you can get them to eat a piece of rubber than, you know, hook up a live bait. Let's see. Scott Olligood, what's up, Mark and Blair? How does DOA lures perform in freshwater? What's the best crossover lures? Um, I'm going to let you handle that since you just came out with a nice uh, giant line of freshwater lures. And like, we got, we got like, we only got an hour to talk though, so we don't have <laughs> enough time. I'm sorry. Might as well cut it off now. Uh, definitely. And in, in a lot of cases, you know, people have been saying, you know, does this lure work for freshwater? I've been asked that forever, uh, from my shrimp on, uh, my shrimp has caught so many largemouth bass. Can't even begin to tell you. So that's what the package I, looks like. Yeah, he's throwing out. That's yeah. That's one of that's our freshwater worms. We make an eight and six. Uh, we do you know we do everything. That's that's basic basic bass rules there. But the segue that got us there was first of all when my company was very young and I'd come out with the bait buster. Uh, this bait right here, uh, one of the largest 
definitely one of the largest co uh, companies in the industry and Freshwater wanted to buy the baits, buy this bait from me and wanted to buy my company because of this bait and it was strictly for largemouth bass. Uh, it's, I think it's a silhouette of somewhat of a largemouth bass. I think a steady retrieve. There you go. Just a nice simple retrieve with it uh, makes it work. Uh, it's not a rocket science bait. It's just got enough flutter of the tail and flash where fish seem to want to eat it. And I think it's got a broad enough silhouette in the front of it where it pushes enough water where it just seems to be one of those magic combinations. So I'd come out with that and we used it for some bass. And I make a shallow runner where line entry comes out the nose, right where my finger would be there, or where I guess it is. And... And then, you know, and then, of course, we were still noted for being saltwater for years and years. And then I came out with this bait right here, one of our swim baits. Uh, we used to call it airhead, but we've changed it to just your basic swim bait with paddle tail. And I was suddenly getting a lot of calls from people in Lake Okeechobee that were doing a buzz tail, that were cutting this tail right here. And that's simply, you can take a look at it, and you can see where I sliced it. And that suddenly makes that tail just have a real hard flutter to it. You can swim it right on the surface. Looks like a big prop. Uh, someone had already asked about frogs. And it gives it that little... Frog is that, yeah, that little that sound that, that kind of drives you crazy. And so it's simple to fish. This, again, is one of those cast crankbaits. And this bait makes, is hollow. If I want to, I can put some, put some foam inside there. Uh, because it's not, it's not just a piece of flat stock when I design it. It's, a, it's a, actually a teardrop shape. What's up, Tony? <laughs> I'm trying to get a word in. Get try, rid of me? No, I'm just trying to get oh, a word man, in. I, I got people okay, commenting. Okay, sorry, there. sorry. <laughs> I, I thought it was the Mark Nichols show. Okay, I won't say another word. I'm just going to sit here now. Uh, one question was uh, your favorite color for sea trout in the four inch shrimp. <sighs> okay. I guess my answer for that, you know, I, really one of my favorite colors is uh, uh, glow with gold glitter. I like that. Uh, that happens to be the one in my hand. Imagine that. But this color right here in the shrimp, I love. I also like a you lot. You know what of, I call that one, right? That color. Oh uh, yeah, snow, yeah. snow, snow cotton shrimp, shrimp. Or cotton shrimp. That's pretty close, you know. Shrimp, cotton, <laughs> snow. <laughs> it's white. Yeah. <laughs> so at any rate, um, you're from Chicago, I guess. At any rate, uh, nasty weather. To me, glow means death in the in the marine industry in the marine world, because uh, a lot of things that are dying, they'll get microorganisms that are doing that glow color. Uh, we need to talk to Cheryl Lynn. She's been up there for Cheryl Lynn, what's, okay, she's got a question. What's my go-to color with a DOA cow? And for trout and redfish, it's got to be that wacky color. i got about 100,000 reasons why I like it. Yeah. yeah well, that, um, I know, I hate that color. <laughs> the electric chicken. The electric chicken. It, it works. It, it works. Really and does. the people say, what well, you know, what looks purple and green? And if you ever go down and uh, you're in an area where there's a lot of pinfish in the grass, at slack tide, when they t tilt on their sides, you'll see that purple and green color. Really? No, I'm lying. <laughs> I didn't think you made no, that yeah, you Come do. On. You do see the purple. I mean, if you look at a pinfish, they got purple all over them. So yeah. I think that's why they eat them so much. Wow. But um, it's your sunglasses, I think. And that would be my that would be my my go to shrimp is definitely the one he picked out. What I call the cotton shrimp. It's uh, uh, glow on the back, gold on the bottom, and works awesome. No, it's. No, it's uh, to even be semi-serious though as well, if I'm, if I'm around a ton of uh, glass minnows, I love clear holographic, which is that color right there. It's basically got about every color in the rainbow with the holographic glitter. Uh, if there's a fish keying on a particular color, it's basically in that bait. So I feel like when they're in those glass minnows, they're just very small flashes. And I feel like that's kind of, it really picks up their attention and they eat it. I've done everything from a ton of small tarp and lots of trout and lots of snook with it. Relief jetty when the water's super clear. Yeah, yeah, super, exactly. In that clear type situation, there's a ton of little flashing stuff. And, you know, I don't care if it's this size or smaller or bigger, those fish are seeing clouds of those baits. So I think they're reacting to just that big reflection of stuff of all those small, of all those small, it's kind of a fleck glitter as opposed to a square or oct octagonal. And uh, it's definitely very reflective. Uh, with this particular uh, bait. Tell us about it. Hey, thrown it uh, this color that much, honestly. First, first fish I saw with this, though, was a nice tarpon caught in South Texas. Uh, 
This is a walking top water. It's called our uh, PT7. It's a walking floating bait. I'm sorry, it kind of drifted away from. Uh, Imagine that. What? <laughs> the young ladies. Uh, so <clears throat> I think I got that covered. Favorite uh, place to fish in Florida? In was sure. it? Wait a minute. I thought I was talking about this fishing lure. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Favorite place to fish in Florida? It goes quick, don't it? <laughs> Favorite I'm place not, to fish in Florida? Uh, one, it depends on what really I'm fishing tough. for, Shane. If it's snook, it's definitely in his backyard. Really if it's tough. numbers of snook, I love going down to Chuckalusky. Unfortunately, down there at the Chuckalusky Island Marina, kind of got trashed with uh, the hurricane. Time. Yeah. And uh, but I, I just saw some pictures from Brian uh, Brian Sanders down there, and he's he's whacking some big snook down there. So. Yeah. And uh, just a message yeah, for anybody you that... you guys get a chance, go down and support those captains. They had just worked to say a that. long time. I was just going to say, the guys down in Key West, you know, the doom and gloom news, CNN and all those guys are doing nothing but doom and gloom. Everything's dead down in the Keys, which is completely opposite of what they say, of course. Um, the guys are begging for business. They've, I know guys down there that have canceled 30 trips since the hurricanes. Sure. And they can't handle that. The hotels are open. And if you're going down there to fish... I mean, you can't beat the fishing right now because there's not that much pressure on they the fish. Beat them. They I mean, beat and, and, and that guide that you've always wanted to go with, chances are right now he's open. So give him a call and you know support the guide business down there because they can definitely they can use it. definitely they use can. it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up. Thanks a lot for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Albert, uh, no, I guess his place is North End of Mosquito Lagoons, Joel Rutledge, that color PT. What happened there? Oh, wait, go? see, can I get back to talking about PTs now? No. <laughs> go for oh, it. PT I'll, I'll kind of do this as fill-in talk while he's trying to read to people's comments. So this is a walking weedless top water. It's got a big, huge hook in it with a real deep gap to it. It's very heavy. That deep gap is going to serve as a keel weight and keep this bait sitting basically upright. Since it's symmetrical, if I skin hook it here and it gets torn, I can skin hook it over there and skin hook it 27 places. It won't matter. It's in a hollow space in the back, so my hook exposure is very, very high hookup percentage because there's no tearing of the plastic when I'm working the bait. It's got a piece of closed cell foam inside, and that's got a rattle inside the closed cell foam, so it... It walks, it rattles, it, it's weedless as it can be. It casts a country mile. It's just a bullet on a cast. Weighs a hair over five-eighths of an ounce. I can chuck it a mile with my spinning gear or my top water. And uh, it skips extremely well under docks, mangroves, whatever you want to skip it under. And a uh, very fun toy to fish with. What's your favorite color in Jacksonville? No, that question was like a minute ago now. Uh, favorite question in Jacksonville. One of my favorite questions starting about Jacksonville North is a uh, stupid color that's been around a million years, root beer, chartreuse tail. We probably sell yeah. more of that color than morning, any other color. I like the morning glory. Morning glory, similar yeah, type of deal. Real similar to the bait. Uh, big time contrast. Bottom yep. line is those fish, you know, the <clears throat> Carolina phrase, it ain't no use if it ain't chartreuse. They're looking at something bright. But basically, if you got something this dark and you got something that bright, you got, if they can see dark, they can see that. If they can see light, they can see it. Yeah. Yeah. I always like anywhere there's Spartina grass. I love throwing that, that uh, morning glory. It looks more like a mud minnow than anything else to yeah. me. And uh, you'll catch flounder, redfish, and trout on it. Color. It and, is a uh, good color. Everybody's lovely Lede fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> everybody needs to have some of those for the projectile pooping that you can do. We've had contests. Paul DeBro, hey, Blair and Mark, been throwing DOA for the past. Have you been making lures that long? Uh, 20 years? Well, there was a guy that looked just like me that started a company a long time ago. I'm much younger than that guy was because he'd have to be old by now because he started Where can a long Albert time ago. Where can Albert get the PT? Uh, they are here and there right now just because they're so new. They're guaranteed on our website, of course. Uh, they got them in Dick's. I'm not sure. I think they do. Yeah, they do. I think they've got yeah. them in Dick's. And uh, they're limited in Walmart, but a lot of your, your smaller companies do have them. Uh, I've jumped on board with them, a lot of the local tackle shops. Yeah. And if they don't, ask about them. I always, say go, I always tell people to go to your website because yeah. there, there's, so there's so many more baits on his website than what you'll see in, uh, than a lot of the stores out there. You know, if, if Dick's can't carry everything. But they do carry a lot. But, I mean, if they carried every DOA lure out there, I think they they'd can. have. They, yeah, nobody they'd have, can. They'd you have know, three different shells, three different can. rows. You, yeah, up. you suddenly, you know, you learn that, you know. 
On order. On order. <laughs> All of them, huh? Cool beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, we've Shane. Seen, we've seen that once or twice. We're go to DOA. We got him. <clears throat> I know the guy. Where's everybody from tonight? Yeah, where's everybody from tonight? Uh, I'm sure you guys down in Brownsville are, are watching. That was our biggest turnout from Facebook. So, how do you do down there in Brownsville? Hope you guys are doing all right down there. I'm from Houston. A really good place to be from. Actually, they got some good food. Vero Beach, Sherilyn. Houston. Houston. Vero. Best yeah, lure for Houston. flounder. Flounder. I like the terrorize right there for flounder. Thank you. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree. And... You know, a lot of, uh, let's talk about colors for a minute. Root beer terrorize has been good forever. But basically, if I was going to say throw three, I would go a lighter, darker, bright. I'd want that. Then I'd want, say, perhaps a chartreuse. I'd like a white. Uh, you know, a real good friend of mine, Rick Grasset, over there on the West Coast. Rick fishes those little canal tarpon a lot with that bait. It's an extremely good small tarpon bait. And uh, we use it on our side. We primarily throw root beer. It's our go-to color. On that side, his primary go-to is uh, pearl. Uh, here's, a, here's a flounder bait I came up with right here. Uh, it's a diff uh, just a different way, and I always say this on my seminars too. Just because it comes with a J-hook in it doesn't mean you can't take that J-hook out and put a jig head in there and fish I've, it in deep water around I'm the docks of flounder. About, when I'm talking about the products, I'm telling people always buy the nine-pack. Yeah. They're unrigged. You can put your jig head in it. And you can buy nine for about the same price if you buy three. This, yeah. isn't, this ain't rocket science. People, but, even like us, fishermen, can figure that out. That works very, very well, though. I mean, you can skip it underneath docks around Jacksonville. I mean, if you get the, uh, the root beer shrimp with the, uh, or with the chartreuse tail or even the morning glory shrimp, that's the way to do it right there, and you will catch you some flounder. I'll guarantee it. I've even caught, him, caught flounder on that little dude right there. That's the, the swimming mullet. Um, Got bottom to, line is both the same thing every time. Got to be on the bottom. Yep. You got to get it down on the bottom. Uh, only exception I've seen with that flounder is some super skinny water. Where sometimes they'll come and pound on it from the top. That's always pretty cool to see. Ed's got a question out there. Pick them up. Ed Zayak, are you out of jail <laughs> again? Okay. Yeah, he, I think he is. Okay. He's free. When did he get? Yeah. When did he get loose? Uh, he's he's a good guy. You know. Uh, well. You know, his wife is still looking for him, but I think, every, I think it's going to work out. Well, guys, anybody out there? I saw some uh, people from Florida and Tampa. I was Tampa. supposed to say fully out well, Florida. I'm, I'm okay, just going to go plug you. Why don't you do that, would you? I'll sit here. <laughs> All right, folks, this weekend's coming up, the Florida Sportsman Show at the Tampa State Fairgrounds. Well, they got a and, piece of paper uh, right over there, a giant letter saying blah, 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 blah. I tell us FS Show, Sat 9-5, Sun, 10-4, to 4, <laughs> Marks. Seminar. Yeah. Okay, seminar. here we go. The Florida Sportsman Show is from 9-5 to 5 on Saturday, 10-4 to 4 on Sunday. Mark's seminar will be, a, you're only doing one a day? Or are you doing two? Yeah, I got, I got, I'm, I'm doing noon on Sunday. 11.30 Saturday and noon on Sunday. I thought I was doing, yeah, that's good because they were wanting me to do three. I'm going to be driving home by three probably. Okay. Not really. But uh, if y'all have never met Mark it's, Nichols or sat in on one of his seminars, it's you know, kind of like this. It's so much information that gets thrown up against you. I hope some of it sticks up here. No, it's I mean, uh, <laughs> there's still, you know, it, it's, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of those shows have faded. There's some real nice guys that are trying to put this thing back together and give it life, so. You know, to get a chance, uh, go have a good time and visit and stuff. And I, <clears throat> I can talk to you or off for about an hour. And if I, if you talk to me for, if you buy me a beer, I'll talk for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill. Yes, uh, retention ponds are very common to have tarpon in there. Um, my theory is, I guess the eggs float and it gets on the bird's legs and they go over retention ponds. And since a tarpon has a bladder in his, sure. basically in his, has a what an immature lung is what they kind of call it, come up and grab air. They can live in zero percent oxygen in the water correct so yeah they can live in about anything they're actually like a little invisible larva and uh they go they work real well with like these hurricanes and huge flood tides because it allows them to get way up in the mangroves where those tiny little suckers that can have that air bladder and be able to you know convert air by gills or by air that's pretty convenient i wish i had some gills i could do that probably wouldn't you know, we wouldn't be a strike on any handsome, though, but it'd still be cool. So somebody knew you up there. They said you like Corona. Oh, uh, I've had a Corona or two. Yeah. <laughs> one or two. Yeah. yeah, I like lime, too. If you're going to buy me one after I've talked to you for a long time, ask for lime, please. Uh, it's cold. It's really cold. It's good. Hey, we, had a, uh, we had a comment on one of the shows that we did. As a matter of fact, it was last, last year's show about this beautiful spot in Stewart that we fished. 
Right. You know, it, you don't have to have mangroves around to uh, to find a snook. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, basically, I, I don't know if it's totally in here what it, what you were doing, but the water was coming. Yeah, I'm explaining it right there. I can tell by I'm, I'm bouncing it off my belly. Mm. That water <laughs> was howling too. I got an excuse for my belly though, so at least then I did. That was a good shot of the snook laying behind that thing there. It's a good shot of the terrorize. Oh, yeah, that's a good shot of the terrorize. The water, the water was just clean that, that was day, not, wasn't it? That was, that was not the Roosevelt Bridge. Uh, yeah, that maybe, was our, maybe 60 years ago. Maybe. That was our brand new uh, x-ray camera that saw the bottom at the Roosevelt Bridge. Oh, look what you got, a jack or something. Oh, that, my ribs were hurting so bad, down. dude. Oof. What, did you fall that day, too? No, back uh, last year, it was December 2nd. I don't, I've told a few people this story. Yeah, that's but where you did the backflip on yourself? Yeah, backflip off the off the four-wheeler, and it landed on me at the same time. I broke ribs all down my left side and dislocated one out my back. But uh, that's why a lot of fish this year were a little small, because I was a hurting pup. But I'm back to normal now. Let's see. John Durant, hey, guys, watching over the pond in UK. All right. Hey, I, I remember... Uh, I, I took quite a few people from the UK when I was a guide, and they had this show over there that when the guys would come with me, they said, your show is just like this one over there. It's called Screaming Reels. I think it was called Screaming Reels or Screaming Drags. Is it still on? <laughs> Matthew okay. Herzog, hashtag <laughs> Save the Glades. Anything y'all can do down there, man, South Florida is hurting. Yeah, well, I was hoping for the hurricane to hit just right, but that didn't work out for us, so... I've uh, discussed, you know, never mind. Mike uh, Gonzalez wants to know what our fun. favorite knot is. Uh, well. Line to line, what's your favorite knot? Line to line at this point, I've, I've, bec- I've, I've got a new favorite. I can't, can't argue the, uh, the FG knot. That's it, brother. It's the most unbelievable freaking knot I've ever used. Oh, it's no doubt. unbelievable. Uh, line diameter, being able to bring it through your guides. Being able to build up a longer leader so you can cut off more times. It's just everything about it's good. Yeah, we're going to have some smaller guides coming out on the rods next it's, year. And it, and it still goes in just fine. And, and uh, it's going to be good. It's a, that's a great tool. That, and our, term, our terminal knot. knot we use, we both use the same terminal knot, which is the Merle Chandler Canoe Man knot. Yeah. Uh, I call it the Mickey Mouse knot because when I was teaching those kids down at the down at IMG Academy what uh, this knot was. They didn't know who Merle Chandler was, so you fold it up like that. It looks like Mickey Mouse ears. Mm, exactly. So, Mickey anyway, Mouse Mickey Mouse knot. Backward loop, backward loop. Please show the knot. No, just go to YouTube. Yeah, go to YouTube on a, uh, yeah, go to our site on YouTube, and it, you'll see the FG knot. You'll see, you'll see all the knots. We sat right, I sat right here in the studio and did them, so. They work. Yeah, they work. They're simple. This is live I'm stuff. I'm not, uh. <laughs> The, you know, the FG knot, it's not super fast, but it's a very simple, repetitious knot to tie. It ain't hard at all. And our loop knot is easier than easy. What's up, Michael Harvey? Hey, look, there's some products showing. I could buy one of them cow sticks. There's look at that right Braden. there. Braden. Let's see. Hey, guys, in your opinion, do active storm seasons like the one this year improve structure in fisheries or hurt them? I think it changes them around and just it, it's kind of good. It changes things up, makes you have to go learn new places where you're not doing the same old thing. And there's no doubt it's a flush. Uh, I've seen some, you know, one of the best fishing days I ever had was uh, just like a couple of weeks after Andrew down there in the glades and where we've go, you know, where you can normally go way up Gopher Creek. You couldn't get 30 feet inside it. Thing, everything was down so bad, but. There was a migration of mud minnows coming out of there. Oh, man. And there were <laughs> gators everywhere, and there were snook everywhere. You'd snag, you'd snag your lure, and you'd see your leader, and you'd go, okay, it's only three inches down, and you'd go, I can put my hand in that water. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but it was unbelievable. It just it changes and moves stuff. Uh, moves structure, but it also flushes. Vincent, we just uh, showed my big... i got a comment from vincent right there it says what's your biggest snook we just showed it It was 48 and a half inches and that was kind of a guesstimate i think it was a little bit bigger than that but i'll stick with 48 and a half and three quarters of <laughs> it was a monster it was the biggest one i ever caught. how about you uh my biggest snook is probably about 47 and a half inches uh, i've had two 50 inch fish come on my boat and one 51 inch fish come on my boat uh, all of those were caught uh, in the st Lucie inlet uh, 
Some of our heaviest fish, though, were always caught by the Roosevelt Bridge. Uh, a lot of those fish, we, we, I feel like they go there to spawn instead of the inlet. And I think they live up in the uh, brackish water systems. I think they eat a mullet and they go to sleep for three days. And then they eat another mullet and then they go to sleep for three days. They get a terrible heart. The doctor would tell them that they need to watch out for their cholesterol. And then you throw a lure and he eats it and he starts to run. He dies of a heart attack. We call them heart attack fish, those big 30-pound fish. They never do nothing in their whole life, and all of a sudden you pull against them, and they go, dang, that hurts, and they fall over dead. <laughs> and they taste like dirt. If I'm, if, if, am I going to eat a fish that's been eaten out of farm canals for 15 years? Are you kidding me? No, nah, they got good. Uh, we used to special. Go, we used to go bass fishing for bass out of the phosphate pits, and their back was like just, it was like, it was like hard. It was like cartilage the whole way down. And uh, they only swam like, you know, it was wild. But, hey, there was a question, That's what's bad. your favorite cobia bait? Right there, the uh, the DOA swimming mullet's got to be one of my favorite go-to baits for cobia. And uh, believe it or not, not even that. I have caught so many cobia on know. that right it's there, the know. DOA shrimp. I mean, the one you throw at 12-inch trout. What happens when you cut open uh, the belly of a, belly of a cobia? They got yeah. shrimp in there, and they got uh, where is it? That's another one right yeah, there. They got crabs. They got crabs in their belly. Yeah, they love crabs. Yep. So um, basically, at the time, if you're out and happen to catch a cobia, um, was, and he's legal, and you clean him, since I was a little kid, I've always been intrigued cutting their stomachs open and see what they ate. I know it's kind of morbid and disgusting, but. No, that's what you want to do. You want to look and see what's inside there. It's, it's really cool. What you found in the belly? Uh, baby coconuts. Uh, I've never used a baby coconut as a bait, but I have, <laughs> ca I have caught the baby coconut that had baby coconuts in their belly, and we, I was I liken it to bouncing this thing right here on the bottom. You've got something that's going thump down on the bottom. It's kicking up a puff of mud. It goes down, kicks up a puff of mud. This this coconut that's not neutral in the water slightly negative but is rolling in a current it's kicking up a puff of mud he sees it and he eats it and he goes dang that tastes like a baby coconut but and then it sits there on his belly until i caught him and cleaned them and if i've caught two that had baby coconuts in their belly i bet there's a lot of snook out there with baby coconuts in their belly and they when you catch them if you don't you know if you don't check <clears> their <throat> stomachs and they taste a little bit coconutty you, you that's probably it that have been drinking like <laughs> rum runners or something. True. Hey, yeah, if somebody wanted funny. me to show how you cut the tail on the, you know how the real cow? McCoy, real McCoy came up, you know how what that phrase is. It's the McCoys actually smuggled smuggled alcohol into Stuart from uh, the Bahamas, and if it was the really good rum, it was the real McCoy. True story. Uh, learn something new every it's day. True story. You guys can write that down. What? I said I learned something new every day. No. How I cut? Oh. Cut. Cut. Um, all right, all right. Showing you how the tail is tail. cut. It come from the okay, the top of the bait, cut from the bottom of the bait. You're holding it up. Oh, sorry, down. I'm from the bottom. It doesn't matter which way you cut it; it's going to flicker in the it's, water. It's not going to do the same. Or I cut a beer or two before the show. No, I always act this way. I truly do. My brother, you know, has seen me with beers and without. <laughs> three, two, three. I have okay. had two beers, but. Two. I've had dinner. <laughs> he had two beers. Honest. Two beers. And like I say, my brothers know me most of my life. <clears throat> and, uh, he says he can't tell whether I've had alcohol or not. Oh, Shotgun God. to double. <laughs> uh, Where were we? How many people we got watching? Twelve. Hundred and two. Hundred and two folks out there. Wow. So you guys don't have much to do tonight, huh? We, 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 we come over here and goof off for a while. Michael Shields tournament. What did you catch the trout on in the Michael Shields tournament? Brandon Miller wants to know. Uh, Brandon Miller, we caught uh, almost every trout on the, uh, on the cow jig. Uh, and most of them were on my favorite color, I do believe, the uh, gold glow. Uh, using a 1 8 ounce head, either natural or chartreuse. We did hook that incredibly large tarpon that was not where he was supposed to be at all, or she, and we hooked that on this with a, with a, uh, actually one of our uh, premium jig head hooks, and uh, right here, nice big gap, very strong hook, extremely good needle point, 
and uh, that huge gap is what I like. Good high hookup percentage on it. And that was full grown fish. We had it on for about 10 minutes. We had it on a 10 pound, 10 pound braid. We weren't going to catch them. We Short didn't. shank or long shank? Uh, you know, I I prefer day to day basis a short shank, but in this case with this bait here, you know, uh, no problem. I put a long area. shank in that. In Where's this case, shrimp? I would not put it in that. No. I like the, the long shank. Long shank size. works good in the shrimp when you're redoing the shrimp like that. It's got so, a. Uh, boy, you stick it back there, huh? Yeah. I never do that. Uh, that's a long shanker there. Huh? Yeah, I know it is. That's the premium long shank. That's the uh, cadmium plated. Still a really good hook. It's got a sharper bend to it, so it's super strong. Plus, it is uh, forged. And uh, I think this one's forged as well. Yeah, it is. Very strong hooks. Robert, how's the flood down there treating you? Uh, it's weird because you ask him a question, but I don't say nothing back. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Hello. That'd be the that next. Is, that'd be the next generation of Facebook okay, Live. Yeah, why can't these people talk back? Then it'll sound Which like. I'm, then it'll sound like Parliament. It's easier to have conversation. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we, it'd be like Kevin whoever can shout the loudest. Yeah, When's the next crazy. show, Liam? I'm not sure when the next show is. That would be a question for. Florida Sportsman him. this weekend. Oh, Florida Sportsman. We're doing the Florida Sportsman show this weekend. Uh, we've got a booth there. We'll be there the whole time. We've got actually some really good people that have been around a long time. Then we've got a couple of the younger folks that are also extremely good anglers. Uh, it's really good to see that, that bracket coming up and seeing a lot of the new people that are really good young fishermen. And uh, what are you, you going to stick mullet? In no, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm trying to pronounce his name. Seraphiel? Sarah Field, yeah. Sarah Field nailed so anyway, a 23-inch flounder last Sunday in Sebastian on a root beer terror ice. Nice fish. Nice fish for down see, there. And root beer terror ice. See, that's yeah. Your checks in the mail on that big, put that big paid comment there. Seriously. Trevor okay. Taylor. Trevor Taylor. That's a good question for me. That's Why don't I tournament fish ice. anymore? Because there's to. too many people that disrespect the environment that fish the tournaments right now, and not say, and, and not all of them. There's a few bad apples out there that burn the flats, burn the duck ponds, run over fish. I can't tell you how many chopped up fish I've found in Louisiana from these people in these boats that go out and run 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 and run. Kind of, I keep on going. They run all day long, burn 70, 80 gallons of gas a day, running and burning the duck ponds no that's why i don't tournament fish anymore not mad at you but i'm mad at the people that do that because it gave everybody in the tournament series a bad name and if if they would come out and have the bezals to come out and say no burning the flats no tower boats pole only or trolling motor only i'd be back tournament fishing that's my opinion amen very true <clears throat> now then scary bad when I'm throwing the DOA mullet, <clears throat> one thing I love to do is throw Procure. And I know you've used this stuff when we're fishing before. Yeah, I gargle with it sometimes. But uh, I usually use this hand lotion or put it behind my ears. Well, or, if my breath is really bad, I can use it. You know, it kind of over Brush your teeth with it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, ah. the stuff stinks, and it is very, very uh, effective on any lure that you use and i mean i know the doas have the enzymes baked right into them but this magnifies it so much more especially when you're fishing dirty water uh this is the mullet i brought a couple of different scents up here if you're using hard baits i know we're not talking hard baits or soft baits this stuff here you can actually break pieces off and stick it in some of these pockets like in this pocket of the uh of the poodle i mean of the pt Mm -hmm. And uh, the pocket of the shrimp, I, it just it gives it extra scent. And if it, it brings me one more bite during the day, it's done its job for me. Especially when I was tournament fishing. You got any pictures of that there snake? Uh, yeah, I do. What else are I going to show? Oh, and your when your hands do get all stinky, there's some stuff here that uh, Procure's making now that will take that stink away. Bad as hand and lure Bad soap. Bad as what? Badass. It's just badass. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be bad. Uh, they got they printed uh, Z's this instead like of the S's. Day before it started but it's good raining. stuff. It's a nice fish. Nice. Yeah, Did you? Fun. Somebody sent me a picture of the world record fat snook or new fat snook yeah. record. Did you see that one? I did. Uh, that was on the uh, top water PT. Was it? Well, it was. The fat yeah. snook. No. So did you see the giant? Somebody sent a picture of a giant, biggest one I ever seen. Well, we've caught. Yeah, that's that's a pretty easy record to or fish to break a record with if you really want to. 
but at the same time, I, technically, you can't even do that because you couldn't keep it in possession, could you? Which would be just fine anyway. There's your I was just snake babbling. Heart. There's the snake. There's the snake. I was going to find a picture of it. Back Look at all the chat. penfish chasing it. Yeah. You guys entertain them and talk to them while I find a couple pictures I don't want to show. All right. The, uh, oh, don't show them that one. No, you don't get to see that one. <laughs> but, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. You just can't do that. See, Krill's Peter's favorite uh, stink from Procure. Uh, Procure is the best. The gel holds on like the gel holds on. Sorry, it's moving up and down for me right now. Um, Krill is your favorite. I don't know. I've never used the Krill, Peter. I have to give that one a shot. Mostly I kind of I stick with the baits. Like if I'm using shrimp, uh, one of the DOA shrimps, I'm in real, real dirty water. I'll put blue crab on it because the iodine smell that comes off of the crab is a whole lot more. Uh, and in the dirty water, I think it gives the I think it gives the fish a little more uh, scent to go on. Scent to go on. <clears throat> scent to go on. So uh, I was talking about that nice, pretty uh, area we were fishing in. Oh, we stood that one, though, didn't we? What's that? Where we were fishing against the wall in Stewart. It's here. You want to see it? I thought we showed that one already. Yeah. Okay. So we were out fishing in Texas. Oh, yeah, this one ahead. A couple of months ago. And uh, my buddy Ed and I are fishing together. And let's see. There's a picture. That's our little snake right there on the fish's mouth, hanging in the mouth there. Let's and it down. Tilt it down. There, there you, you go. go. And uh, that little snake right there, we were side casting fish and we were using it, just waiting and casting around. And in the process of doing that, Ed is like waiting and, you know, we're on a road trip to Texas. He gets to Texas and he realizes he's got one size uh, 12 and he's got one size 14 booty. <laughs> and so as he's waiting, he feels something swimming to his booty. And, uh, you know, there's a nice red fish with it hanging there. And he feels something swimming to his booty. And so he takes his booty off and this thing right here falls out of his booty. And the thing on the... Uh, my left, I guess you're right, maybe, is got is our is our artificial snake, and that thing on the other side swam out of his booty. What is it, a pikefish? No, they're just little worms. They're just little marine worms and stuff. They're living in there, and we've been throwing that with that little weight, and the fish eat the dog doo doo out of it. Trout and redfish, it's unreal. Was it? Do you say that was or wasn't a pikefish? No, it was not a pikefish. It was some kind of little marine critter. Uh, little eel. Yeah, the little eel. Kind of looks like the, your eel. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it looked just exactly like the bait that we were using. So it was just, you know, it was really impressive. That was like kind of really struck home. So we threw it a lot and we caught a ton of fish with it. And what's cool is I could fish it like, a, you know, so we were talking about uh, fresh and salt water. I was Carolina rigging it. David Carthers on here. Car Carthers. Uh, we caught a red the other day and it had a 14 inch king snake hanging in it out of its mouth. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what you need—a king snake color one, though. Yeah, I've, 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 I'm going to run back to the you shop. You got to make, you got to make a king that. snake color mark. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I can't blah, tell you how many blah, times blah, blah, I've been blah, blah, at shows, blah. man. You got, you got to make. The, I had this one soaking in, uh, uh, you know, I, beet when it, juice. <laughs> when we we're early days at DOA, I had new captains, and they'd, I'd let them come back and paint their own stuff. Next thing you know, they'd be putting smiley faces and spots all over them, all different colors. Then they'd go have a good day, and they'd come and go, hey, you need to make it like this. And you're like <laughs> looking at that going, okay, I've got 15 minutes per lure, and uh, that's going to cost the public some money. So we just quit letting them do that. I'm like, well, no, don't do that anymore. I want to uh, give a couple shouts out there from guys from uh, years gone by. Lloyd Christopher, what's up? Kenny Conley, how you doing out there today? The Snook Man. Oh, Alan Deal, what's happening, Alan? The Flathead is a great bass bait. I guess that's the flathead. The flathead snake. I guess that's, that's the one he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That Everybody would be my might guess. Have been he talking doing. about he was using flatheads to catch uh, to catch flatheads, maybe. Flatheads to catch yeah, bass. Yeah. Well, tell them about your giveaway real quick. Um. On the screen. On the screen. Where's that? Oh, okay. Well, really good. I color. don't see it on the screen. Good color. Register the fish is moving there. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, this year, make sure you go to the website, addictedfishing.com. You can get uh, win a trip to come fish with me. Uh, everybody's been asking for years. Uh, and I, so you know, cool. Can I, I can't, fish with you sometime? No, we're never fishing again. Never fishing. Sure. 
Can you see the comment? Everybody wants uh, to. I would love wants to fish with you sometime. We can get rid of them camera guys. Mike Keselowski. <laughs> What's so up, cool. Mike? Okay, St. Pete again. Yeah, Mike will be in St. Pete again for sure. Hopefully this year for the tarpon. If we can find a spot. <laughs> it's like a little buck of grand out there now. Yeah. Somebody's asking for bait buster with trocar hooks there, Mark. What do you think? Uh... <laughs> Stumped him. I don't know about that. Okay. <coughs> we are going to do a... We have been asked to do a real heavy hook uh, in the bait buster for some guys that, again, that are doing the same thing as, you know, these guys that order 10,000 of these at a time from the Christmas Islands that are using them for yellowfin tuna. And uh, because they say it looks just exactly like a butterfish, and they're using it as that shape, and they're crushing them <laughs> with it. But what's that got? What, what was the question? Was there a question? Uh, trocar hooks for bait busters. Uh, trocar hook's an awesome hook. Uh, the only reason I'm not using it on this is because the trocar hook has that sharp edge on top, and if I skin hook it, it cuts through too quickly. So this is ex exactly the shape of the trocar 7.0, only it's a, a needle point. Yeah, you can't skin you can't skin it because, like you said, it cuts the right hook, through right the, now. The hook is kind of shaped like this. Correct. It's got a diamond on the top, so yeah, it, it just cuts slices. right through. It's awesome slices. hook. It's an awesome hook. That's why it can and penetrate you know, your bones. So if good. you're, say, a bass pro or something, you don't mind if it tears through, you know, if you have to re skin hook it 27 times. But, but if you're just Joe Blow like yours truly. Hey, Frankie, stand by. <laughs> just my new boat. <laughs> there she is. Lisa's on board. Wait, right on. Who's that? Big fan. Lisa, what's up? She'd fish with you. She I'd doesn't know. Captain Mark. Okay, Lisa. No, I'll no, fish what she's in for. All right. I'll, uh, t I'll text you my phone number later. Dear Lisa, I, anyway, I'm still marking. Yeah, I do a lot tiny of, I fish drop a super glue. I won't fish. slide as much. I don't need to make excuses to fish. Uh, yeah, Frankie, I've done that for my DOA shrimp before, uh, especially during the tournaments. I've sat up all night before just putting dot of super glue, dot of super glue, dot of super glue. Yeah, people um, do it on their hooks. Some of them do, uh, some of them will uh, super glue that. Uh, the rattle that'll go in the uh, that goes in the small shrimp too <coughs> these days, the little two and three quarter inch shrimp. I've got a pocket in the back of that bait that's made to accept that rattle, and uh, if you drop a super glue in it, if you're getting them little lady fish and small trout, they won't shake it out. The little simple things, uh, and that can be worth it. And you can always, you know, if it gets loose, you can pull them out and stick them in the next one. Uh, right. There's something else I was going to talk about. But Lisa's yeah. bringing the Corona. Le Good. <laughs> well. Cool. I, I like you more already, Lisa. This could be a great relationship. <coughs> Do you really like to fish? Does she? Okay. I will find Gilson out. would love to come back down to Brazil and do some fishing. I had one of my best fishing trips down there ever. Gilson uh, is a great guy. Where'd he go? Liam's asking about the 28 inch trout in the background. Is that your. Uh, actually, that is my 34 and a half inch trout that I, I didn't want to kill the fish that I caught, but I caught a 34 and a half inch sea trout and we could not find a mold big enough. Uh, so through Bob Brown and he, he looked all over the world for a sea trout mold and there just hasn't been one that big, uh, 34 and a half inches, but that one there is 33 and a half, we but man, what a fish. Yeah. How to hook up an airhead. Okay, Basically, so I... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, this is a swim bait hook right here. It has the spring in the front that screws into the nose of the bait. And basically, there's a there's a pocket in the bait right here. If you see, it opens up, and that's where I put a lot of my Procure stuff right in there to make it stink. But what I'll do with this bait, come right down the center, pull it back, pull it back towards the bend of the hook, and come right up through the center of the bait. And there you got a rigged airhead, or the bait formerly known as airhead. And they're using screw uh, It won't be long before. Yeah. That's the uh, that's our larger hook. We will also have a uh, four O that'll fit that'll fit really nice in our smaller swim baits and that sort of thing. Because I do love the screw the screw hawks, and I love that that trocar shape of that hook. It's just an excellent shape for a high hookup percentage. Jonathan, love the love the Pine Island area down there. Hopefully, you guys didn't get hammered too bad with Therma. Uh, I, I think they was, got pretty lucky. We yeah. got some friends that have places down there. Oh, there's a. How do you rig a terrorize? Now, when I first started fishing these baits, you want to do this one? 
I I can. But you I can do it. You're right there. See, I got this thing in the way. You go ahead and do it. Okay, let's play like this is another terrorized hook right here. So you know automatically how to, huh? No, that's fine. It's just used to pull. Okay. Basically, you, you know how to get it at least that far. I'm going to save a little time. So you get it that far down. You pull the bait slowly. Oh, actually, I better show you the, the whole thing. The Thank first you. thing. Okay, sorry, Mark. Golly. The first thing you want to do is right where the, the eye of that hook is going to pop out. Grasshopper, right? You want, to, better. you want to take and make a hole right there in the top of the head, okay? Now, there's a little slot in the back of the terrorized back here where the hook goes. So you go right in his eyeball with the hook, and it pops out the top of that slot. See that right there? In through his eyeball. It's better. So now you take and you start it. I'll start it all over the eye, something like that. Now I'll take this hook and I will slide it in there and grab, maybe I will, <laughs> slide it in there and grab the, uh, grab the bait and pull it up over that eye. I can't watch. And it goes right <clears throat> in the hole. And you got a perfectly rigged terrorize. I can't tell you how many times I was trying to get that bait over that eye like that, and you end up ripping that little thin piece of rubber right there. But yeah. Mark showed me. Yeah. Hook it with the hook, and then you pull it over, and it's a lot easier to do that uh, way. So yes. hopefully y'all learned something tonight tuning into AF Live. AF Live. AF Live. That is live. Wow. That worked pretty well. I mean, you know, for our first time. I mean, it's my first time ever on television. Water I mean, there? Everything. Yeah, it'd be nice. <laughs> Do what? Boy, I wish uh, I had a beer. Where's, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten her name. Uh, Lisa? Lisa. Was uh, going to get the, bring the beer, right? Who had the Mogan tattoo? I saw that one. That's uh, Jason Arman down there. And hey, Jason. Jason, what's going on? I don't know if he's on right now. Somebody was just asking about his tattoo. Mm. Hard work, man, us. <clears throat> Any questions here? Finally, finally. <laughs> Lisa, finally. I've managed to mangle so many. Cool. <laughs> Learn something new every day, huh? Oh, good. You're welcome. Anyway. Yep. I can't tell you how many I ruined before you showed me that. Call over at DOA Lewis and uh, we'll go yeah. do that. Uh, like I say, I'm uh, over on this side of the state to visit my very good friends over here and to do the incredibly famous, well-known Florida sportsman fishing show from 9 to 5 on Saturday and 10 to 4 on Sunday over at the fairgrounds. And what time are your uh, seminars? Uh, well, come any time because, like, if you come to my booth and I'm really bored, first thing I do is I go, let me go demonstrate a lure for you. And then we go walk outside and we can throw lures in the pond for a while and I can burn some time. and Catch armored, like ca armored yeah. catfish. Yeah, there's some armored catfish back there. I caught several of them last year with a snake, about that much of it. And... Uh, but there's some really nice bass in that, in yeah, that you, pond back there, too. I heard you caught a nice one there last I year. I caught a few, yeah. It's a fun place to fish. Uh, it's, you know, better than standing inside sometimes. Oh, there's Jason. Beer 30. Yeah, there Jason Arman. What's up, brother? Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, this weather's been so nice for fishing. What's your best bait for the spillways? Once again, I'll go with that Terrorize. Terrorize is hard to beat. So many people have thrown it for so long. <laughs> I have a... I have... We have uh, started uh, talked a couple people into putting the float with the uh, airhead that's just flopping mm -hmm. down loose below it, and they've done they've done some really good fish with that. Kind of like the redfish technique in yeah. North Carolina, exactly. Pamlico Sound. Yeah, exactly, amazing make, different make ways to use Make a bunch of noise stuff. on the surface. I always wondered, and I've always asked myself, and I've asked you a million times. I have too. What's it supposed to represent? Uh, it's the coconut. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's a, a coconut. Yeah, there's there's a little known fish that lives down there called the terror eye that a lot of people don't know about. But I spent years and years underwater down there when I lived under the bridge when I first started my business and <laughs> sleeping under there. The cops hassled me so many times when I was under the bridge that finally I got an air hose tube and I held on rocks and I lived underwater for almost a year. And I discovered the little terrorized fish. They saved my life one time when some big sharks came by. They like Stop started, Emilio from Mexico. They started poking my eyeballs, and so I woke up and they saved my life. And I made it. I made that in their honor. I always said I don't know what it looks like, but it does catch the it absolute catches fish like tar crazy. Out of fish. It's got a good silhouette, holds down very steady and straight in a current. And I think sometimes the fact that it doesn't move and freezes is one of the reasons mm -hmm. why it works so well. 
So we gotta move on, boys. It's been an hour. That's been an hour been already. Is it really? Yeah, it flies by, wow. doesn't it? Thank goodness. It is beer 30. I haven't had one in a while. Caught a 45 and a 46-inch bull. Nice. Uh, Polly Sun this nice. year. Cool Baines. Way to go, Paul. They pull hard, don't they? They're fun. If you if you really got that really good day bite where they're really eating, too, you can just start hammering on them like when you're catching a 30-pound jack. Just oh, pull yeah. as hard as you can. They're fun. <laughs> uh, Paul, here's, here's I had a question. What do I do with the scent? I'll take any anytime there's a little pocket or a slot or anything that uh, I can put the scent into. It's got a little lip, I mean, a little pointer in there. And you can, and hey, you can look, fill that stuff look, up in there. there's another one. Hey, look, there's another hole. Hey, look, there's another one. Yeah, I, I like those. I got little pockets all over the place. Okay, and you can sneak it around. And you can go through the airport security with a little bit of that pork here in there and they'll never catch up. Okay, next question has got to be the last question. We've been going an hour. So after Annette's it's comment not, saying not love your show, time. we are going to wrap it up. Should we watch uh, Mark's wettest... Uh, Tarpon? Anybody want to see Mark uh, get wet? Yeah, well, yeah. And then, you know, I, for the first time ever, I saw that one jump up on the dock tonight. That was cool. Okay, we'll take, go, ahead, go ahead and play it. We'll just Except we'll take the life. best question coming up. I'm what, going over this? that week. I didn't see where the hook was yet. I haven't either. Oh, perfect. Right in the top of the mouth. Open that jaw. Get that jaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're laughing over Meanwhile, that. back on the Indian River. <laughs> there you go. That holographic you, shrimp. So cool, sir. Yeah, those sides you can pick up. Sweet. Nice fish. Hey, you get a little wet, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one there. He got me good. That was so cool, sir. That was a cool hit. <laughs> Thumped it just like a tarpon does. I felt that little thunk and then set the hook. Thank you, ma'am. So cool. Sweet. Let me touch that tarpon. I'll let her get me wet. Boy, I ain't got that wet with the fish in a while. Thank <laughs> you very much, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. So how'd that uh, North Fork water taste? I don't know that I could have got wetter with one fish <laughs> that size than telling you it gave me a shower on that sucker. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It's pretty fresh that day. It wasn't too bad. It's like pure fresh now. All right. The, the question I'm going to choose that came up with that clip going was what is the best inlet bait to use? And it kind of all depends. If you're, if you're uh, cast, let's say if you're not in a boat and you're casting an inlet and it's a shallow inlet like uh, Sebastian Inlet, I would throw the shallow run-in bait buster, which we don't have the shallow runner, but just look for the one that has the, the, the eye nose. of the hook right in the nose. Yeah, um, right there, if the, if the current is That's absolutely shallow. ripping, I would throw one of these to get it down a little bit further, this one right <laughs> here. And that's the one I caught my biggest snook on shallow. right there ever was the... Uh, the golden black over gold black over real gold. good color but if i'm in an inlet excellent redfish if color, i'm in yeah. an inlet in a boat drifting say in stewart or even sebastian right there it is doa terrorize and you and the tip to fishing this guy in an inlet is not making not making a super far cast but to almost vertically jig it because if you think of how you're using when you anchor your boat you know, the sure. longer the scope you put out on the anchor, or the longer the line you put out on the anchor, the easier it is to get hung up. Just like fishing, you make a super long cast. I'm going to cover this whole area, and you're going to get snagged, and you got to go get it up or bust off the lure. Uh, so try vertical jigging because the snook are going to stay down there. Yeah, and you're in you're a deep just, water situation. They're in their comfort just zone down there. So barely bumping, barely bothering. bumping. They're used to the boats going over their heads, and heck, they see a little thing like this. Coming, coming by their head, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Um, their natural reaction is going to be to eat it. So, by far, you're going to catch flounder. You're going to catch snook, redfish, tarpon. I think I've caught about everything on that bait right there. It, it, that thing's got everything offshore, inshore, <clears throat> little well, tunas. Well, guys, want to say thanks for tuning in tonight. Hope you all uh, enjoyed Captain Martin Nichols from DOA Looter, L L Looters. Yeah, Looters. 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 <laughs> DOA Looters. He's always out stealing fish. Uh, but um, Martin Nichols from DOA Lures, awesome baits. I mean, uh, that was the number one bait I started off with with Mark right there, the little DOA shrimp. 
And uh, I think that was probably still one of the, my favorite baits. Got to uh, From those times when we could wait out there and catch fish like that, there's nothing better. Oh, yeah. yeah and don't cool. forget, if y'all want to go see Mark, he's going to be at the Florida Sportsman Show this weekend at the Florida State Fairgrounds, 9 to 5 on Saturday, 10 to 4 on Sunday. And if you want to catch his seminar um, and have a Corona with him, <laughs> you can do that 11:30 a.m. Saturday morning or 12 o'clock noon on Sunday, and they can come out here and out there and listen to you uh, blah, talk blah, and blah, blah, babble, blah, babble, blah, babble, babble all blah. about plastic lures. And if you guys want to see more of these online, make sure you leave it in the comments, guys. Yeah, leave it in the comments. Uh, don't forget about the website addictivefishing.com. Go there to register, and you can win a fishing trip uh, and be on the show. And go to DOA Lures. Go to DOA Lures, and you can DOA get lures and any lure he makes out stuff. there <laughs> and catch you a go fish. In there and you can come into the office, and I probably won't be there. He'll be fishing. Y'all have a good time now. See y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Later. DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. Basically what I'm doing out here is I'm utilizing the tide. My tide is going from my left to my right. So I'm casting perpendicular, very much like I would a stream for a freshwater trout. Lure is hitting and tide is sweeping it. We're throwing up from this, on top of these grass, on top of these grass beds and it's dropping off into these troughs and these trout they'll lay in the lay in the troughs they'll come up on the grass beds do cruising around through these potholes drop back in and they're just constantly cruising around looking for bait and such and we're just trying to make it very easy for them to eat by just letting that bait just sweep and all they got to do is just suck it in i'll give it a little short snap but the bottom line is you've got to let the bait just let it do its thing you don't need to work it to death i'll twitch it but Right now, I can literally hold this lure in this current and hardly move it at all, and it'll suspend. I notice I'm going to keep my rod tip very low to the water, and the reason why is because if I raise my rod tip up real high, that means I'm going to have a big belly in my line, and if I get my strike, there's a good chance I'm going to miss the hook set. If I got my rod tip low, I got more contact with my lure, a more direct line to my lure. Therefore, I've got a much better chance of really being able to stick the fish well. I really want to utilize that tide to let the tide do the work for me. If the bait's directly down tide, the fish are looking up toward me, and if I'm bringing it back this way, he's looking this way, and it's coming up his rear end, and shrimp do not climb up five, ten-pound trout's backs. And so you want it to go from up tide to down tide the way he's looking and expecting the bait to come. We just came off plane, came back around, coming up on this buoy right here. He's got a nice triple tail on it. Let me show you what I'm throwing, too. This is the new two inch shrimp by DOA. It's got orange eyes on it. Got a few different colors of them, but uh, two inch shrimp throws great in the wind, has a great action to it. But uh, can't wait to catch another one. Where is he? Oh, he's on the other side. Oh, I see him there. Just got his head poking. Yeah. He's not that big. We'll educate him on a DOA. Oh, he wanted it. Ew! Quick. <laughs> right on the bat. Man, Just that didn't take nothing. Up, ah! <laughs> Just can't pass up catching a fish. They like that one. Hey, let me jump down from up here. I'll help you out. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I think you'll make a 15 inch. Oh, yeah. yeah be careful with these.